today's hearing, uh, I'd like to call to order the Public Improvement Commission hearings of May 25th, 2023. Mr. Lining, if you could be ever so kind and do a roll call for me, please. Certainly. Would the representative from the Public Works Department please state his or her name for the record? Para Singh, Public Works. Thank you. Property Management Department? Joseph Callahan. Transportation Department? Amy Cording. Water and Sewer Commission? Denise Dablin. Disabilities Commission? Sarah Leal. And ISD is not able to join us today, but we do have quorum. Thank you, Mr. Liming. First order of business, the approval of hearing minutes. At the request of the Public Improvement Commission staff, the acceptance of minutes of the PSC hearings held on May 11th of 2023. I'd like to hear a motion to that effect. I'll make a motion to accept the hearing minutes of May 11th, 2023. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed or abstain? Hearing none, motion passes. Moving on to the public hearing segment of our agenda. Item number one. On a petition by the Herb Chambers companies for the making of specific repairs within the following public ways in Dorchester, consisting of curb realignment, sidewalk reconstruction, as well as new and relocated pedestrian ramps, specialty pavement, street lighting infrastructure, street trees, landscaping, green storm water infrastructure, storm drain infrastructure, and driveway curb cuts. Victory Road at the end of 720 Morrissey Boulevard, generally between Freeport Street and Morrissey Boulevard, Freeport Street, generally south of Victory Boulevard, I'm sorry, Victory Street. This was brought under new business on May 11th of this year, as shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division Specific Repair Plans, Freeport Street, Victory Road, 720 Morrissey Boulevard, Public Way, Boston, five sheets dated May 24, 2023. Good morning. Good morning. Can the petition uh, identify and introduce yourself and your team for me, please, or for us? Yes, good morning. Um, my name is Tyler King. I'm with CHA Consulting, and uh, we're the civil engineer on the project. We'll be presenting on behalf of the Herb Chambers companies, uh, who's the applicant. And with me today, we have uh, Paul Sordo, who is the project counsel. Um, I believe that's it. Thank you, Mr. King. If you could share your plans. Everyone see that all right? Yes, we can. OK. Um, so as I mentioned, um, we're presenting today on behalf of the Herb Chambers companies uh, for a proposed Honda dealership located at 720 Morrissey Boulevard. Um, the site is located here in yellow, and um, it is bounded by Victory Road, which is to the north, plain west here, and um, Expressway Toyota, which is right across the street. To the east, we have uh, Freeport Street and uh, recently constructed Mass DOT salt sheds and then uh, Interstate 93. To the south, we have a 7-Eleven um, gas station and then an active construction project for proposed apartment buildings uh, in this area here. And then to the west, uh, we have Morrissey Boulevard and um, the plaza across the street, which contains a CVS and uh, a recently renovated tile warehouse facility. Um, this next sheet shows the existing conditions uh, around the site where we propose specific repairs. Um, this plan specifically shows Freeport Street. The existing sidewall blocks along Freeport Street are approximately five feet in width and are um, asphalt sidewalks with vertical granite curbing. This next sheet shows Victory Road. Um, similar condition, we have approximately five foot asphalt sidewalks. Um, there's a Cape Cod berm along these sidewalks, and there's a couple curb cuts, which uh, are rather large in width that we propose to close off as, as part of the project. Um, but the curb cuts are just south of the existing Honda ID sign, as uh, shown in Street View B. And then there's one um, looking at Street View A, but uh, there are cars parked along that. But um, we do plan to close those off. 
And then uh, this last plan just shows uh, the proposed improvements and specific repairs as a whole. Um, if I zoom in and we'll highlight Freeport Street. Um, as I mentioned, there's an existing five foot asphalt sidewalk there now. We're proposing eight feet total. Um, the first three feet, the furnishing zone will be permeable pavers and uh, spread throughout the permeable pavers. We have planter pits, uh, which will consist of planting soils, mulch, and ornamental grasses. Um, outside of the furnishing zone, we have a five foot sidewalk. And then uh, we propose a, ver a vertical granite curb along the street. <clears throat> Moving to Victory Road, we have um, 10 foot proposed total width, including the curb. Uh, so we have the vertical granite curb along Victory Road. We have a three foot permeable paver furnishing zone. Um, and we were able to install some tree pits and street trees uh, within that furnishing zone. And then uh, outside of that, we have a six and a half foot concrete sidewalk. Um, within the furnishing zones on both streets, we also have, uh, we propose street lights and uh, we propose the reconstruction of the existing curb ramps on the corners of Freeport and Victory, as well as Victory and Morrissey, uh, and propose crosswalks to connect to the reciprocal curb ramps. Uh, so with that, I think that uh, wraps up our presentation and I'd like to open it up to any questions. Mr. King, at the new business hearing, I believe I recall mentioning something about the condition of Freeport Street today and the additional degradation of Freeport Street resulting from A, your construction, B, that means A, your construction vehicles entering and exiting the site, B, the additional utility cuts that we'll be experiencing on Freeport Street and our Victory Boulevard. So I, we are also very excited over the fact that a company like Herb Chambers continues to invest as needed in our city and to be complimentary to the reputation of the company. What might your thoughts be? I think I have suggested what the thoughts might be as to how you are going to treat Freeport Street because it, it's seen better days, it's going to see worse days, and then by the time we are done, how will you leave Freeport Street, the roadway uh, itself? Yes, Mr. Jai Singh, this is Paul Lasoto. I, will, I agreed with Tyler that I would handle that one. I've been working with the Chambers companies for about 25 years. Can you hear me okay? Yes, Paul. Thank you so much for joining us yeah, today. Yeah, nice to see you again. Uh, so I actually spoke to one of the vice presidents and actually saw him again last night, and we discussed it generally. Although this is a new new uh, suggestion, the condition of Freeport Street speaks for itself. The area is changing. The area is getting upgraded. We want to be part of that upgrade and take a basically a desolate uh, you know, site with no green and add, add to the green. I think you re might remember on Commonwealth Avenue in 2013, Mr. Chambers proposed recreating islands that had existed in the 1940s and 50s, but got paved over and we, we, we did a public-private uh, partnership there. So we have a history of doing those things. We've got these pocket parks that we're creating on the two corners of Victory and Freeport, Freeport and Victory and uh, Morrissey here. We're expanding the uh, the, the sidewalk on Victory and closing off the entrances in part because I've ridden bicycle, bicycles on Freeport Street and the hub on wheels and it's challenging. And I know that there's talk about getting bike trails, so we'd like to be part of the linkage of the, any Morrissey bike trail with the extended Naposa Valley. Um, what I can tell you is that with over 25 years of working with this company is we're not happy with Freeport. It's not in a good condition, it floods. Uh, but we would be foolish before the construction on the um, apartments is done and before our construction is done to tackle it. Uh, we would be entering into serious discussions with the Public Works Department about what to do, whether to mill and overlay it. I uh, actually talked to Tyler and, uh, and had a, 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 a discussion with a, a paving contractor since our last, since you last raised the subject, I spoke to a paving contractor about the various alternatives. I just need more information on the condition, but I think my track record on standing behind what I say when things like this come up is pretty good. 
and my relationship with the Chambers Company is pretty long-standing, and we will engage with it. I don't know if it's going to be a purely a private matter on the financial side. It really depends on whether we can do it as uh, privately, which can be done less, quite frankly, less expensively, and whether it involves a complete reconstruct of the road, which might be a little bit beyond my my ability to promise today. So oh, really, but we would engage with you. Paul, a couple of points. First of all, I truly value the partnership that has been there between you and the city and the chambers companies. These are things which I, for one, value. That's one. And you are absolutely correct. Your team has done spectacular work within the city. So when it's a partnership, it is not fair for one party to, to ask un, undue burden on the other part. I think the city will be happy if we can just do a two inch, you know, take two inches off, two inches on, a simple Milan overlay. I'm not asking for the whole reconstruction. That's, that's like way too much, okay? Because as a cyclist, Paul, you know how very interesting that corridor is and how that link of Freeport Street connects so many other segments. So it is being used and when we do a project of this nature, it, it's going to look amazing. So it's just to do the, not the bare minimum, but something a little bit more than bare minimum, but not the full blown, full body surgery. That's not what I'm envisioning. So Paul, I'm confident that you as the, the visionary person you are and the Chambers company, the right thing will be done. Is it fair for me to say that? Yes, mill and overlay done privately as part of the construction so it can be done efficiently when they're building all these sidewalks and things that are uh, straddling the public and the private realm is most is the most cost efficient alternative. Uh, I will I will um, use every effort to convince everybody up to Herb Chambers himself that this is the right thing to do is consistent with our relationship with the city and with your department specifically. And I will, uh, I am pushing the limits of my authority right to the point of, uh, you know, uh, facing termination myself, which isn't a, even at my advanced age is not a prospect I would welcome at this time. But I think we can deliver on that. That's Thank what you, I would say on the record. Thank you. And I truly, seriously, I truly appreciate the foresight and the partnership and the leadership that is exhibited by all parties. That is what Boston and this region is all about. So my my thanks to you. I only have one other request, that you twist some more arms along Freeport Street so we don't just have one segment that looks nice. Exactly, in totality, but you all are the stewards of our city. You are our major league players, and hopefully others will be inspired by your leadership. Thank you, thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, Paul. Uh, any uh, questions by fellow commission members? Hearing none, uh, any comments by PSC staff? Uh, I have no comments. Um, I will mention uh, or take this opportunity to remind the public, if you wish to add testimony or ask questions, please use the raised hand function, which can be found uh, in the uh, reactions tab at the bottom of your screen. Uh, but I think we're all set for now, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Todd. Any comments by members of today's audience? Hearing none, I'd like to hear a motion regarding public hearing number one. I'll make a motion to approve a petition by the Herb Chambers companies for the making of specific repairs in Victory Road and Freeport Street is read into the record by the chair. Perfect. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed or abstained? Hearing none, motion passes. Thank you, everyone. Truly appreciate you. Engagement. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. We Thank you very much. Moving on to the new business segment of our agenda, item number one, 980 Hanson Avenue, Boston proper, specific repairs on a petition by our Boston Water and Sewer Commission. Good morning. Good morning. Um, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the uh, Public Improvement Commission for allowing the Boston Water and Sewer Commission to present our petition this morning. Uh, my name is Nelson Piacenza. I am the Chief of Strategic Management and Business Performance at the Boston Water and Sewer. I am joined by Tony Oliva of PMA Consultants, uh, JT Breeder and John Gonzalez of DH DHK Architects, 
Bree Sullivan of Gale Associates, our civil engineers, and from the Boston Water, Wenling Mar and Nana Negron. Uh, we are petitioning to make specific repairs at the Harrison Avenue right of way. Uh, the project will include the placement of pedestrian safety bollards along the sidewalk at both the building's public and employee entrances to add protection from vehicles, as well as replacement of an existing asphalt sidewalk patch with concrete. Um, Harrison Avenue is a busy roadway intersecting uh, Melnia and Cass Boulevard uh, with no buffer between the active ve vehicular traffic lanes and the pedestrian foot traffic. Um, BWSC is, is seeking to improve the safety for customers and employees at the main uh, building entry, entries, especially since uh, the auto crash uh, through the Apple store last year, uh, resulting in some fatal fatalities. Excuse me. Um, at this point, I'd just like to turn it over to uh, Tony Oliva from PMA. He'll get into a little bit more details. And then uh, Bree Sullivan, uh, civil engineers from Gale Associates, will walk you uh, through. Uh, we have a three drawing set. Uh, Tony? Thank you, Nelson. Uh, good morning, Mr. Chairman and members of the commission. Uh, my name is Tony Oliver from PMA, uh, who are providing OPM services to Boston Water and Sewer. Boston Water's headquarters is located on Harrison at the corner of, uh, of the intersection with Melnia Cass Boulevard, a highly active traffic intersection. Uh, their facility, which serves as the center for their administrative, legal, and engineering functions, also serves as a customer service center. The building is sited close to the property bounds and features two major entryways, one for public and other for employees, generating a significant pedestrian presence on two locations on the Harrison Avenue sidewalks. Uh, those sidewalks are fairly generous width, but Harrison Avenue uh, at the frontage of 980 does not feature parking in front of the building, nor break down our bike lanes. And Excuse the result me, Tony. Sorry, Tony. Uh, are you hoping for us to see any of your presentations? Because we are just witnessing your, your cell. Uh, yes, uh, uh, I, I was going to turn it over. Uh, oh, my, 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 my bad, my bad. Sorry, to, Tony, continue. continue. Yeah, no problem. Uh, so the, the result is that the pedestrians are in very close proximity to vehicular traffic, which moves briskly. Uh, Boston Water is currently undertaking improvements to the public entrance with, to enhan enhance uh, accessibility and energy efficiency, and so they're looking to also increase safety. Uh, you know, the, the frequent spate of uh, news stories involving uh, vehicular and pedestrian death and injury, uh, it certainly isn't limited to the Apple Store, uh, and so the Boston Water is hoping for an opportunity to provide the safety and also to replace a, uh, a section of asphalt patch on the sidewalk, uh, bringing uh, that stretch of uh, uh, the sidewalk back into a consistent uh, treatment. Uh, at this point, I'd like to uh, ask Bree Sullivan of uh, Gale Associates, who performed the civil uh, uh, design on this, to uh, go through the plans with you. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, Tony. I'm sharing my screen right now. Can you see the plan? Yes, Ms. Sullivan. So um, the first page here shows an overview of the area um, of work. You can see the intersection of Melnia Cass as well as Harrison Ave. We are uh, on the, uh, the plan, the lower left-hand side of the plan is BWSC uh, headquarters there um, you see C801A and C801B those are the two general areas of the proposed bollards and this is a close-up of those two areas um, the the plan includes a description um, in the lower right hand corner over the title block that 
uh, states 21 bollards. Um, actually, there are only 20 bollards in the public right of way. One of those bollards is actually at the, uh, the employee entrance, um, but it's outside of the right of way. So there's actually 20 bollards proposed in this um, right of way. Um, on the plans here, you can see the existing right of way line um, and property line in red uh, here. And then it's harder to see, but the, the gutter line, um, our face of curb line is shown in blue along the edge here. Um, this dark area, this dark, dark shaded area is a uh, bituminous sidewalk patch that's, that's been there for a, a good amount of time. Um, the proposed construction will include the replacement of this bituminous asphalt sidewalk with um, the city standard uh, concrete sidewalk panels. Um, there are two types of bollards being proposed. One set of uh, removable bollards in certain areas and fixed bollards, but all of the bollards are uh, vehicle crash rated to protect pedestrians on the sidewalk. I'm gonna zoom into the plan here so I can show, uh, basically what you see here is um, there is the, uh, the infiltrative strip of, of uh, in, um, porous pavers. You can see here uh, denoted in sort of a brick pattern, brick hatch pattern. Um, that is existing today and it will be replaced in kind or removed and reinstalled after the bollards are installed. Um, the bollards will be uh, placed, installed two foot three inches from the face of curb to the center line of the bollard, um, the line of bollards. And you can see behind the bollards, um, there is anywhere between seven to eight and a half feet. So somewhere in there uh, between the center line of the bollards and the right of way line. So as we go down the sidewalk, we're, we're going away from Melnia Cass on, on uh, this location here. Um, you can see the employee entrance there. Um, again, we have uh, two foot three inches to the center line of the bollards from the face of curb, um, and anywhere between seven and a half feet to eight feet from uh, the center line of bollards to the right of way line. So this is a detail of the installation of the bollards. You can see the bollards require a, a 30 inch by 30 inch concrete footing. Um, the concrete footing, as you can see here, this, this detail here is for the sidewalk section that doesn't have the infiltrator slip, uh, strip. And then this detail here uh, shows how the bollard will be set with the, um, the porous pavers on top of uh, the footing. And then you can see here um, sort of how the bollards will look in between each um, footing. We had originally looked at a continuous concrete um, footing, but that would limit the amount of infiltration that was available. So um, we actually went with this, this um, providing the minimum amount of concrete per the manufacturer's instructions and also allowing for infiltrated space around, around those foundations. We also included a concrete sidewalk detail, which um, is identical to the, um, the city standard. So are there any questions on the plans or the proposed work? Thank you, Breen. Thank you for that wonderful presentation. Questions by fellow commission members? Hi, everyone. Um, thank you for your presentation. I'm curious if the language of the permeable pavers work to continue through the proposed um, restoration of the asphalt path that a 5 foot path of travel or um, similar could still be maintained um, if that paper strip were to um, continue past where it currently does today. So Sarah, what you're asking is um, whether or not we can continue the, the paper strip into the, the asphalt sidewalk patch. Yes and essentially um, continue it um, to the, the edge of work. And um, I'm curious what that dimension would be between 
um, the planter area and that um, paper strip would end up being. Don't have that number um, on the plan here. Um, I want to say the the number that's coming to mind is is approximately a hundred feet there. Um, uh, maybe it's less than that, 440. Maybe it's 50 feet. Yeah. Um, so maybe another 50 lineal feet there. Yeah. Um, what would be the width between um, the edge of the paper strip and the planter area? So the, like the the width of the passable sidewalk. Um, and I understand that I'm kind of putting you on the spot, and I'm happy to talk about it offline. But I'm curious on whether that language can continue. Um, to so just a, a rough estimation. I can I can tell by looking at the plans. A rough estimation using scale. If we keep if, if we uh, keep the strip the, the way it is now, I would have to guess. Uh, let's see, eight, ten, eleven feet. So let's say it's a ten foot wide sidewalk. I would have to guess that it would be six feet between six and seven feet of of uh, concrete and then approximately three feet of permeable pavers to continue that strip. Um, I'm wondering if it's possible to, um, between uh, new business and public hearing, just to do a quick sketch of it, um, because I think that um, from an urban design point of view, continuing that language as well as um, water infiltration reasons as well as well as visual accessibility um, that might be um, something that we would be interested in um, if we could maintain um, a Boston complete streets path of travel but still have that visual um, delineation between the path of travel and the furnishing zone. Thank you. Yes, exactly uh, with that. Tony, do you, to, do you want to comment on that, or? Uh, yes, uh, we'll, we will certainly uh, bring up the, the topic and, uh, and discuss it uh, amongst the team. Uh, I think the, uh, the, the dimension uh, of the, I think what you were asking about, Sarah, was the dimension of the concrete sidewalk, uh, if we uh, uh, maintain that permeable strip down. I think it would be around five foot. Uh, I'm not absolutely certain what that other surface is. I, I believe that there's a fence line that runs down there, so we can we can verify that and uh, discuss with the owners about the potential of that, adding that scope. Uh, Great, thank you so much. Sara, thank you. Uh, am I muted? Uh, Nelson, Tony, uh, just a little bit of background. Uh, the Water and Sewer Commission was a tremendous leading partner when we reconstructed this uh, permeable strip. Okay, I mean, it, it was one of those uh, landmark situations where the Water and Sewers Commission's leadership in providing green infrastructure. So basically, your team was the lead, and we are just asking you to carry that amazing leadership just a little bit so that from an urban design vocabulary, that it makes a little bit of sense because I'm scratching my head to figure out why that asphalt patch is there and what the heck what it's doing. So I applaud Sarah for picking up, picking it up, and if you can just continue that vocabulary so that we can rejoice and celebrate the leadership that was exhibited by your team in the very initial green infrastructure implementation. You know, before it was in vogue and in style. These efforts were undertaken by your commission way before anyone even could figure out. So it'll be nice if you could tag that thing. Understood. I, I, have, I have a question. It looks like there are trees right along the sidewalk where these bollards would be placed. Will there be any impact on the trees? Uh, I do want to add that we did receive a response from the initial distribution of the package as to whether uh, uh, we our installation was going to have any impact on existing street trees. And uh, it is certainly our intention to, uh, to uh, not impact them and to protect them during construction and to uh, maintain them. Uh, we've been asked uh, to indicate them on the plans and uh, in it, uh, we 
we believe there may be one that is, uh, there certainly are tree pits down this stretch of Harrison, and we believe that there is one that is uh, somewhere close to, uh, to these two uh, uh, plan detail areas, which we're, we're, uh, we've got on our to-do list between now and the, uh, the public hearing to indicate where it is more clearly and to provide language that, that, they will be, uh, that it will be protected and maintained. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. Yeah, uh, I naturally assume that in front of the entrances, if we if we had put a tree right in front of the entrance, that tree is not going to do well. And uh, so I kind of assume that maybe that's why you are not showing it. But uh, to follow Mr. Callahan's suggestion, if there are trees, please indicate on your plans and take all due necessary precautions to keep those little babies alive and not to make their life more stressful, irrespective of the fact that we have permeable you know that whole routine. Uh, any further comments by fellow commission members? Hearing none, uh, PSC staff, are we all good on this front, Mr. Lyman? Sure. Um, I will just mention very quickly that the project has received a response from Liza Meyer, the Parks Department. Um, she did uh, take a look at one existing tree that had a baller being installed very close to it. Um, but I think because the tree is relatively immature, uh, she was not concerned about the root system being so um, I think we're all set on that, uh, on that respect. Excellent. Uh, I'm, uh, if there are, uh, let me see currently, are there any comments by members of today's audience? Seeing or hearing none, we will mark this thing up for three weeks, Todd. That's our next hearing, right, for June 15th? Perhaps that work for the petitioners? Yes, three weeks is fine. Yes. yes, thank you. Yes, wonderful. Yes. yes. Nelson, thank Tony, you. Pri, thank you so much for that wonderful thank presentation. You. See you in three weeks. Thank Second you. item on our agenda New Cypher Street, A Street, C for Charlie Street, D Street, E Street, Richard Street, Medallion Avenue, Fargo Street, Summer Street, South Boston. Widening, relocation, extension, specific repairs on a set of petitions by the Massachusetts Port Authority. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Chairman and uh, members of the commission. My name is uh, Steve Farr with Net Engineering. I'm the project manager working under Massport. Um, I'm here today with uh, several people. I won't name them all, but primarily Nui Huang from Massport. Um, and I'll uh, share my screen. That's OK. Can you all see the PowerPoint presentation? Yes, Steve, you're good. Okay. Um, just a brief presentation here and then I'll get into questions. So we, um, this project has started um, in 2017 with MassDOT being the proponent and um, it has been a long journey, but it's been tremendous uh, collaboration and coordination from many stakeholders listed here on the page. Um, the, the not least of which is the people at the top, the South Boston and Seaport residents and businesses. Um, all the agencies here uh, did tremendous amount of coordination and compromise to the benefit of the residents and the businesses in the Seaport District. I'd like to say that I think, I think everybody would admit that everybody didn't get anything, everything they wanted, but again, that's the definition of compromise. So together, we've all come together and have a great project here that's gonna benefit the residents and the businesses of uh, this neighborhood. Um, this is our team. Again, Massport is leading this effort and I'll turn it over to Nui to explain exactly how they became involved in this project. Thank you, Steve. Um, good morning, Mr. Chairman and uh, member of the commission. Um, as uh, Steve mentioned, this project, you know, has been uh, started many, many years ago, um, and it's a huge collaboration between the many agencies um, um, and the community on this project. Uh, MassDOT left this project back in 2017. Um, I think many of us on this call um, spent many, many meetings together um, in the room with MassDOT. Um, Massport actually took over this project in the spring of this year for a number of reasons. Um, staffing and grant management. So there's, there's a small grant that was um, part of the uh, funding for this project. 
um, we are excited, um, you know, to, to be able to take this project from uh, PSME stage to uh, bidding and construction. Um, and over the past couple months, um, we've been partnering with many of our st um, stakeholders, including on the call today, we actually have several um, um, agencies, um, or stakeholders on the call to support us or to voice their support. Uh, with us today um, is Larry Cash. Um, Larry actually was the project manager managing the project for MassDOT. Uh, uh, with us um, is uh, Jody Ray from the MBTA, Deputy Administrator for Rail. Um, and the MCCA, uh, we have with us John Donahue, Chief of Operations and Capital Projects, um, and Arthur Fritch, uh, Community Liaison, um, along with several MASPA staff on the call. Uh, we appreciate um, uh, the city, um, especially Todd, over the past couple of weeks or so, has been helping us getting to a point where we're ready to present to the commission. Um, and with that, I'm gonna turn it back to Steve so that Steve can take us through the project scope. Um, and um, schedule. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Noe. Um, again, as Noe said, a lot of coordination over the years, um, and these are the public hearings that we've had with the community. A tremendous amount of public engagement has happened, starting with MassDOT and their design public hearing. Uh, there was a little um, break in the action, so to speak, um, in 2019, um, but we kicked it back off again when Massport took, took over fairly recently, earlier this year. And we've had three very successful public meetings um, in the South Boston neighborhood, and we're ready to move forward. And I think there's another one scheduled in April coming up as well. And they continue to be part of the process and will be during construction as well. Uh, these are the project limits, um, starting over here on the left side at A Street and the intersection of Richard Street. Uh, we will reconstruct uh, portions of Richard Street across over the South Boston Bypass, which is a MassDOT jurisdictional road, down New Cypher Street to D Street. And then as we cross D Street, this section of Cypher, New Cypher Street does not exist today. This is the extension part of New Cypher Street. And then we're going to re-mill uh, and overlay E Street all the way up to Fargo Street, and then Fargo Street itself will be totally reconstructed as well. I would say we're petitioning the PIC for two specific actions, widening and relocation. There are small widenings at the intersection of Richard and A Street, then in front of the Channel Center garage here on Richard Street. Um, there's widenings on New Cypher Street along the frontage of the Convention Center parking lot. And then obviously the extension is a totally new roadway itself. Uh, Besides widening and relocation, there's specific repair, obviously, um, and I'll go into that in more detail in a minute. Um, and um, yeah, let's move to the next slide. So as we as we all know, um, if you've been out there today, this is a, these are pictures of a new Cypher Street today, looking at the South Boston Bypass Road and the signalized intersection there. Uh, this road currently prohibits pedestrian and bicycle traffic, technically. However, if you've been out there at any time, you know that pedestrians and cyclists routinely use this road, um, dozens of them every day, taking the life in peril, if you will, um, walking along the streets where there are no sidewalks, biking in the roadway uh, next to these Jersey barriers and, and these narrow travel lanes. And we are going to change all that, make this a fully complete streets, accessibility for all modes of traffic uh, in much more safer conditions. This is sort of a rendering of what we're, we're talking about. This is we're standing on the South Boston Bypass Road looking east toward D Street. You can see the existing photo in the top left, and this is our artist's rendering of what it will look like in the future with new signalization, uh, new sidewalks, um, a 10-foot bi-directional bike lane. Um, the bikes will stay on the south side of the road. The convention center is on the left side of the picture here. Uh, new sidewalks on both sides, new street lighting, drainage improvements, ran a curb, pedestrian access ramps. We're going to reconstruct and replace the uh, existing rail crossing with a new rubberized rail crossing surface, state of the art. Uh, and then the pavement markings and signs to delineate the bicycle path and the pedestrian crossings where there are none today across the South Boston Bypass Road. We're going to fully design those crossings 
with the appropriate signalization in the future. This is a, a rendering of Richard Street uh, looking towards the South Boston Bypass Road out in the distance. Again, the existing photo is on the bottom left. And what we're basically doing here is we're taking out one of the turning lanes and we're pushing the curving out into the street to provide that access for that bi-directional bike lane. Um, as many people know, there it's already bicycle facilities on A Street, which is behind us in this photo. And this will provide connectivity from A Street down Richard Street, across the South Boston Bypass Road, down Cypher, uh, New Cypher Street, and all the way to D Street, which again has bicycle facilities into the Seaport District. Um, these are the improvements that we're going to take throughout the project. Um, again, the, the, the bicycle track starts at A Street and goes to D Street, and then the extension will, will not have a bicycle track. Uh, it will have sidewalks, and the same thing on Fargo Street. Fargo Street is a full reconstruction with um, sidewalks only and street lighting. Um, that's pretty much the presentation. I won't take any questions at this time. Thank you, Steve. Uh, Todd, do we need any more specific, uh, because what Mr. Fahn did was a very overview schematics. Thank you, Steve. You may just want to hit the, actually, Steve, before you go to that, can you go back to the screen which you had? There was just something which I noted. If you can go to slide number seven. Steve, that traffic signal that is there, does it belong to the city of Boston, Massport, or Mass DOT? Mass DOT. Okay, a tiny request if you could, you know, square this thing away with Mr. Cash or, you know, the street name signs, I'm always puzzled. Why don't we put the street name signs between the two signal heads like every other state in the union? Okay, position the street name signs in the right place so one can actually use it. That's just a tiny comment. But as it belongs to Mass DOT, the call is there as final call. Uh, so if you could just go to the plans and just go through them so that way the commission members can give their specific comments. Okay, so I'll, I can walk through the plans specifically here. Um, there's, quite a, there's quite a few of them. And again, sometimes they're difficult to read with all the leaders and the hatching. But this is the intersection of A Street and Richard Street. Uh, we're making some improvements to the signalization of this and obviously new pedestrian ramps for accessibility. Um, this is one of the, the widening relocations. There's a small little sliver right here, which we're expanding the, the city street layout. I should say all the widening and relocations are, have been taken by MassDOT. They are permanent easements that were taken by MassDOT during, uh, through the eminent domain process. And they have been recorded at the Suffolk County Registry of Deeds and those have been provided to the PIC Commission. So the right-of-way is fully uh, acquired and, and ready to be you know, acted upon, um, and then will be turned over to the city um, after construction. So again, this is the start of the two-way cycle track in this cross-hatching here, pushing the curb out into the existing street. We are um, retaining and maintaining the existing street trees here on the, on the park. Uh, that I think was part of the, the Channel Center project. Um, that's not to be disturbed. And then we are going through, this is Medallion and Richard Street. Again, new pedestrian ramps here. This side of uh, Richard Street has no sidewalk today, and we are going to add a sidewalk with ramps. Um, this the cycle track, again, continues down along the south side of Richard Street in front of the Channel Center garage. Go to the next sheet here. Again, we continue in front of the Channel Center garage. This is the South Boston Bypass Road going north and south. And Richard Street and New Cypher Street starts on the right side of the page. This is the railroad crossing that you could see in that photo rendering before. We're adding all new pedestrian ramps where, again, there is no facility today to cross this roadway. Pedestrians just really, uh, they wait for gaps and cross the street at their peril. So we're adding signalization phasing for pedestrian crossing and bicycle. Uh, there's going to be bicycle crossing with bike lights at this intersection. Um, as I mentioned, the cycle track continues along the Cypher Street towards the south side of the project. 
This is the convention center parking lot, and this is their driveway access. We've worked closely with them uh, to figure out how to design this and even maintain this during construction. Um, we are widening this. You can kind of see this red line here is the existing street layout, and we're widening it here to, again, expand on the turning lanes at this intersection going in the westbound direction. Uh, I'll skip to the next sheet here. We pick up from the driveway for the convention center there. We're continuing down a new Cypher Street with, again, um, a 10-foot bi-directional bike path plus a 8-foot sidewalk with street lights in the middle, um, a fence, um, a small chain link fence on the outside. This is a little slope. The roadway is being raised one to two feet to provide additional drainage capacity and capabilities where right now the road is very flat. This is C Street right here and we're just making minor changes to the intersection there. That's, that's a stop control today, it will remain stop control and you cross C Street and continue down the southern side here. This is, um, again, another driveway entrance for the convention center into their parking lot, formerly Bullock Street. Um, this is where the alignment of New Cypher Street changes quite dramatically as we are, we are angling down to meet up with the extension, which is on the next page. So now we're at D Street, Cypher Street today, as you can see the blue lines, the cipher tees off right here and there is a flashing yellow beacon at this intersection. So we're replacing that flashing yellow beacon with a fully operational traffic signal. Again, new ramps. And this is being aligned such that it matches up with the extension. This is the portion of Cypher Street, new Cypher Street that does not exist today. We are creating this link between D and E Street to facilitate um, truck traffic and vehicle traffic through this corridor. Um, go to the next sheet. And again, the extension continues all the way to E Street. This is where the full depth reconstruction of New Cypher Street stops, right at the edge of E Street. Um, new pedestrian ramps here, crossing E Street and New Cypher Street. And then this will be mill and overlay all the way up. And there's already existing sidewalks on E Street. So this is just a mill and overlay or a couple of sheets as we get up. I'll just skip ahead to Fargo Street. And it's the next sheet. Okay, so this is the intersection of E and Fargo. As I mentioned before, this portion, all of Fargo Street from E to summer will be reconstructed. Again, today there are um, no sidewalks on Fargo Street. We're adding those in today or in the future. Uh, reconstructing the driveways, new street lighting, changes to the drainage uh, facility in Fargo Street. And then the project terminates at the intersection with Summer Street. No improvements uh, or signalization at this intersection. It's gonna remain a stop control. Uh, I believe there, there may be future improvements that the city is doing on Summer Street. So this is where we're sort of stopping our work, which is new pedestrian ramps that cross far. Thank you, Steve. Thank you so much. Nui, it's so good to see you. And thank you so much for being as brave as you are to take on this task. I'm sure there's around lots of people that are very excited about someone in your amazing capacity who can actually get this thing done. So. All our collective thanks to everyone that has gone through the years of engagement, participation, and it's such a joy to see this at the end. So please let us know how we can help. Just a couple of housekeeping things. Steve, you mentioned that mass duty with the taking of some land. So right now, at this point in time, uh, it is possible, and you may want to uh, con consult Mr. Cash or others, it is possible that Mass Duty may have to sign just the widening and relocation petition because legally they are the ones who have property interest over there. So it, it's just an additional, additional signature on just the widening and relocation petition. So uh, that's the only thing I can think of. Uh, questions by fellow commission members for this amazing project which has been brought before us today.
No questions, um, but I also did want to thank the team for working with my office at the 11th hour um, regarding um, the train tracks. I think this is a huge improvement um, and we're looking forward to seeing this implemented. Thank you, Sarah. Any additional uh, comments by fellow commission members? Uh, a little anecdotal comment from me to John Donahue. John, if we live long enough, we, if this stuff eventually gets done. But seriously, Rui, thank you so much. I, I don't think I can properly express the city's and everyone else's gratitude for your leadership. Uh, Todd, any comments by PIC staff or members of today's audience? No, I think we're all set. Uh, if maybe give the audience a second if anybody wants to jump in. Looks like we're good. Hearing none, uh, let's. I'm just going to make a mental note of landmark days where we actually do amazing stuff. So uh, three weeks from today, that should be June 15. That's the next available public hearing. So Steve, we will see you then. Yes, and thank you very team. much. Thank, thank you, Steve. Steve. Yeah, Nicely done. Thank you. Thank you, Nui. Our gratitude towards you or to you. OK, uh, next item, item number three, 10 Stony Road. Brooklyn Road, Statement Street, West Roxbury, widening relocation, pedestrian easements, and specific repairs on a set of petitions by Stonely Brooklyn Limited Liability Company. Good morning. Good morning, um, Commissioner and members of the Commission. My name is Matt Henze. I'm a consultant for the owner, the developer of Stonely Brooklyn LLC. Uh, Stoneman Berkeley LLC is a partnership of Causeway Development and Jamaica Plain Neighborhood Development. Um, on the team with me this morning is um, Joel Oliveira, the civil engineer, and Andres Bernal, the architect, just in case there are background questions. Um, I would like to just take a quick minute on an overview and then pass it over to the design expert, uh, Mr. Oliveira. Uh, but just on overview, just want to say quick about the project. It's a 45 unit new construction home ownership project. Um, it is in Jamaica Plain. I think uh, Mr. Jayasin, you, you said West Roxbury, so a correction there. Um, uh, it's affordable home, 100% affordable with both city and state public funding. Um, Boston MOH is uh, heavily involved in the project, both on the funding side and on design review. Also, you know, extensive BBDA design review, aside from the PIC participation, you know, as typical. I'm very excited about the project. We think it meets, um, you know, Mayor Wu's affordable home ownership agenda. Um, and just coincidentally, not super relevant to this group, but there's also a uh, artist housing component. Five of the units are, are artist units. So we're pretty excited about it. We're ready to go. The project is actually scheduled hopefully to close financing by the end of June. So uh, it's very timely to hopefully conclude our PIC process. Um, I'll just say a couple of things about process and content. Process has been, um, as always, you know, long, thorough, comprehensive, um, lots of back and forth. But I just want to say personally on behalf of the development team, uh, super productive, really, really appreciate the participation of many city agencies you know that participated in our uh, attempts to review draft um, plans and petitions prior to this this moment now uh, specifically obviously you know mr liming always at the you know head of the ship on, on this process and so super responsive in many you know communications and meetings uh, disabilities um, public work street lighting transportation water and sewer, um, on and on. So we've got multiple communications across the board. Uh, so that's been great. Um, definitely, you know, went through the uh, distributions as directed and got responses and we've submitted all of that to the PIC team. Um, on content, I'm mostly gonna pass it over uh, to Mr. Oliveira, a civil engineer, but I just will say uh, quite a bit of infrastructure improvements on this project. There's, I think the commissioners will Appreciate some sometimes there's attention since it's a publicly funded project. There's always that sort of uh, you know pithy little phrase of well the, well one part of the city is providing funding and the other part is adding cost and that's okay that's a healthy tension. 
Um, and we tried to contain costs as best we could while also meeting uh, you know, PIC uh, principles and, rec and requirements and recommendations. But also, um, this area actually, if, if folks are, I don't know if folks have already um, oriented themselves in their minds, but it's, it's uh, close to Forest Hills uh, off Washington, off the southerly you know, terminus of Washington Street right next to the big MBTA yard that probably folks on this meeting know has been the subject of a lot of attention over the years. So it's an interesting area. It's, it's kind of transforming into from a light industrial area to a mixed use area with a pretty strong residential presence. Will be the third roughly this size, 40, 45 ish units, new construction building um, in this area. And accordingly, you know, BPDA had some uh, sort of master plan requirements on connecting these streets eventually that I think our plan has accommodated, um, including even changing uh, curb line configuration on Stedman, which by the way is a private way. So um, I'll, I'll wrap there. We have uh, three petitions um, in play here. We've got a specific repairs petition, a pe pedestrian easement petition, petition and a widening and relocation petition. The last one, of course, um, is relevant to a private way on Stedman. And so would only, um, you know, that change would occur if that street converted to public. So we try to accommodate, you know, with that, with this widening and relocation plan and also um, street lighting that is currently uh, connected to and will be maintained by the developer entity, you know, post construction but that would easily be, relatively easily, uh, be able to convert to the public system should, the, should, should Stedman go to a public way. Um, okay, I'm gonna stop there and ask Joel Rivera to walk us through our specific repairs plan. Thank you, Matt. I apologize for that uh, issue of whether this is West Roxbury or JP. Our streets are sometimes very interesting and I'll leave it in the very capable hands of my PSC staff to make sure that we have we will advertise this correctly. Okay, and Matthew, before your team takes it over, uh, your project is extremely exciting. And at the public hearing, if you if your architect or someone can give us an isometric view of your building, that way we can go who and ah while you're giving that amazing uh, rundown of what is it that that the transformative change that is going to be there in the community rather than looking at these very dull pictures of PAC stuff. Well, Mr. Jair Singh, thank you. Before passing it over to civil engineer Joel Rivera, um, if um, Mr. Bernal, my colleague, the arch chief architect, could prepare, uh, ready, be ready to screen share. We've got, do have some beautiful renderings if we have a minute in, in, this, in this setting now. So uh, thank you for that. I'll pass it off to Joe. Thank you, Matt. Uh, thank you, Matt. Um, so as Matt described, it, the project is a four-story residential building um, and it has frontage on three roadways, Stonely Road to the north, Brooklyn to the east, and Stedman, um, which is a private road to the south. Um, on all roads, we are maintaining the existing edge of curb line and providing new eight-foot sidewalks uh, on the full perimeter of the project. Um, there's not enough right of way to accommodate eight foot sidewalks and so the way we're doing that is by extending the sidewalks into into the property and to do that we're providing pedestrian easements on the public roads which are stonely and brookley and then on stedman to achieve the eight feet we're extending the sidewalk in and that's being done with the winding and relocation plan so that gets us um, over five feet clear passage on all the new sidewalks by the way, these are all new sidewalks. There are no existing sidewalks except at Brooklyn, but it's narrow. So along Stanley and Stedman, those are brand new sidewalks where there are none. Um, so I can show you the pedestrian easement plan is one of the petitions here where we're providing, we're providing pedestrian easements along Stanley. It's a narrow sliver. There's also an easement for the top of the handicap ramp at this intersection and then another pedestrian easement along the frontage of Brooklyn. And that's what gets us the eight feet. And then along Stedman Street, 
This is the winding and relocation plan that gets us the eight foot sidewalk along this private way. Uh, Stedman Street is, re is being realigned. It currently runs as a straight line, but as you can see in this uh, jog here, that realignment is per the master plan for the fu future extension of Stedman Street. Um, and that's now fixed to the recently installed curb that was put in as part of 50 Stedman Street across the street here, which is another multi-unit residential building. Um, another big element of this design is narrowing the intersection of Stanley and Berkeley Road. So if you can see here, this intersection used to have a very wide, I believe it was for bus turning access to the MBTA lot, but that was the intention. It had a very wide 55 foot radius on the curb. And so we're narrowing it that way down to a five foot radius now, um, reclaiming all of that sidewalk space uh, with the new handicap ramps up and down uh, street tree. So that narrows down this intersection, makes it all much safer for pedestrians crossing. Uh, the project has nine new street lights uh, distributed between the street, between the three roadways, and the new stop lines and crosswalks. Uh, that, that's essentially the application, if anyone has questions. Thank you, Joseph. Joseph, if you could just, uh, ex just zoom in on Statement Street, which is a private way, because yeah. I need a little bit of guidance from my chief engineer, Mr. Liming. Uh, Todd, uh, since this is a private way, a couple of things. Uh, I'm not, it is not entirely clear to me what petition we are entertaining for Statement Street, what portion of it, and to whatever we are entertaining, whether it needs to be countersigned by other residents or other abutters within Statement Street. So I don't know the answer to that question. I, I don't want to put you on the spot, but can you sort of flush that thing out to make sure that we are not in violation of PIC action on a private way. Yep, I can speak to that. Um, so on Stedman Street, we are widening the private walk right of way. Uh, that's one of the actions. Uh, if you can see in this view, um, essentially everything behind the red line is private property and that's going to be incorporated into the private right of way uh, to allow for these successful sidewalks. Um, and then also um, what we've been doing with private ways, if uh, the vehicular or pedestrian accessibility is being um, changed in a significant way along a private way. We have uh, instructed projects to include that on their specific repair plans just so that we can memorialize um, how those uh, accessibility changes are being made um, and what everything is going to look like so that we can ensure that uh, as this is a private way open to public travel that pedestrians have an accessible path through here as do vehicles um, to allow for uh, proper traffic circulation. Thank you, Don. And it is clearly understood by all parties that just because the Public Improvement Commission is advocating for these changes, it does not implicate in any way that the city will, at any given future point in time, accept statement as a public way without going through the proper petition process. Correct. The, the project should be aware um, that the, this is not uh, creating any sort of public way uh, along Sedman Street, that would have to go through either a betterment process or an abandonment and relaying out as a public way or something like that. That would need to happen um, as explicit actions in the future. Thank you, Mr. Liming. I so always appreciate your thoughtful guidance. Uh, any questions for the petitioners at this point in time? Um, I will just note that BTD has got a speed hump program that's coming through uh, this area and um, that you'll need to coordinate with them because I think that, right, like we're probably skipping your front door here. Um, uh, so just to coordinate with uh, the BTD active transportation about uh, where speed humps would fall at the end of this. We just went through a couple of reviews with William Moose from BTD. Um, so I think we're clear of that. Yeah, no, I, it actually came out of that conversation. Um, William Moose oh, yeah. is in our planning department, and we discussed it with our active transportation team who let us know that this is newly on the list for oh, uh, near-term speed humps. So we just want to make sure that, right, like we won't put them in. It, they're, they're relatively simple, right? But um, it's, it's construction coordination. 
Understood. Thank you, Amy. Thank you, Ms. Uh, any further questions for either Matt or Joseph from fellow commission members? Matt, I was informed that this whole notion of Miss Frostbury versus Jamaica Plain, uh, Todd, I think it would be best if you can articulate the thoughts which you shared with me. Sure. Uh, yeah, so th this is legally the Public Improvement Commission has to advertise this as West Roxbury. Um, we have to recognize only those nine um, official neighborhoods as they were um, annexed into the city, West Roxbury being one of them. Um, I understand that this is indeed part of the Jamaica Plain Postal Code, um, but for, again, legal reasons, we have to advertise it as West Roxbury. And then going from that point, Todd, the plan sheets right now with my eyesight is working with me. It says uh, the plans can say agenda. Jamaica. Yeah, the plans can say Jamaica Plain. That's fine. Just Got the it. agenda okay. and the orders have to say West Roxbury. See, mate, look at all this legal mumbo jumbo we have to deal with. <laughs> this is Boston at its best. Okay, uh, any other further comments for the petitioners at this point in time from fellow commission members? Hearing none. Any comments by PSC staff and all members of today's audience? All set. Hearing none, uh, Matt, uh, we'll see you in three weeks. That's our first available slot, which would be June 15. Does that work for you? That's perfect for us. Thank you. Wonderful. And again, appreciate all the hard work which you all do to align your, your aspirations with what the city is looking for and truly appreciate that thing. Thank you. Thank Take you. care. See you in three weeks. Uh, fourth item of today's agenda, 775 Huntington Avenue, St. Alphonse Road, Roxbury, specific repair, projection license on a set of petitions by Roxbury Tenants of Harvard Association, Inc. Good morning. Good morning, commissioners, and thank you so much uh, for uh, hearing us today. My name is Peter Munkenbeck. Can I be heard? Can you just raise your hand if you hear me? Yes, Peter, but if you could be uh, either get a little bit closer to the mic and that might work. All right, let's see how that works. Perfect. Goes. Peter, you okay. spot on. Thank you. Um, I always ask because I'm never sure. Uh, so Peter Munkenbeck uh, had been working with the Roxbury tenants of Harvard, who are the proponents here, uh, for the last 30 years or so uh, as they go through a series of, of redevelopments in this neighborhood. Uh, this is their latest uh, development proposal. It's for 110 units, uh, 13 stories, <clears throat> and it's located, uh, uh, as you'll see, along Huntington Avenue um, in, in between the old Farragut School, uh, which is currently the Kennedy uh, Allied Health School, uh, and uh, uh, on, on, on the other side, uh, it has an apartment house owned by the, the same sponsor, uh, and shortly after that uh, comes the very large uh, Mission, uh, Mission Park development, which begins with townhouses on the left. Um, that lot, which is outlined in black, is the topic of, of today's uh, uh, hearing. Uh, and uh, the, the building uh, uh, has been through, of course, the entire permitting process. The program is for uh, the 110 units. 75% uh, of those units will be affordable to people between 30% and 100% of area median income, much like the rest of RGH's properties. It it's, uh, heavily favors uh, uh, low and moderate income people. Um, the uh, organization is a resident controlled organization with direct election of its board of directors uh, from the entire uh, uh, 1,100 unit population that lives within RGH. Uh, so it's sort of a little bit of a, of a, of a vid, village or town uh, right across, all of this is right across from the uh, Brigham and Women's Hospital, if you're, if you're thinking that way, and just a little bit outbound from Brigham Circle. Um, so th that's the basic program here. Um, we uh, had some more ambitious ideas with regard to how to, tr how to treat the street frontage. Um, we were chastened uh, by the MBTA uh, because they're reserving the right uh, to later uh, alter their uh, their proposal for how to use Huntington Avenue in order to continue someday in the future uh, the median uh, approach that they've used uh, 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 closer to town, right up to Brigham Circle. So we've had to stick with the existing curb line and do all of our work behind it. Uh, you'll see that we've proposed to recess our building. 
uh, and to create uh, as much of an amenity uh, along this stretch of sidewalk as, as we were able. Um, I'm going to ask uh, Jonathan Hedman of Niche Engineering to please uh, uh, proceed from here. We, 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 we're mindful of your comments, uh, 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 Commissioner, of the, um, of the value of showing renderings. Uh, we will spare you today, uh, but uh, we, we have lovely pictures which will include. Uh, the screen is jumping around a bit. I don't know if that's if you can take it down and put it back up. Uh, there we go. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you, Peter. You're good. So All right, let me share my screen again. I'm Jonathan Hedlund with Niche Engineering. Also with me is Terry Kinsler with Offshoots. He's the landscape architect, so he can answer any landscape issues that arise. So we are petitioning the um, PIC for specific repairs along Huntington, St. Albans, and along Huntington for a new bike, uh, blue bike station. So let me first go to Huntington on the south side of the building. So our current plan right now, as Peter mentioned, we are maintaining the existing curb line, either resetting the curb or putting new curb in, depending on condition. We are putting in new porous pavers along um, the street, along with uh, bike racks and three new street trees. We originally had four street trees, but because of conflicts with a combined soil right here, that tree was removed. We had comments from Liza about the existing, uh, we were proposing landscape curve around the existing trees. Based on comments for, from her, we are removing that. So there will be no landscape curve around the trees itself. Um, there will be new furnishings, which Terry can actually briefly touch upon right now. These tables and chairs along the curb line. Hi everyone. Uh, sorry, I'm taking this from my, from my car. So, um, the site furnishings that we have proposed within the street, uh, within the site furnishing zone, um, are basically requested by the RTH community to provide additional seating. The corners of the building are uh, projected to have some sort of commercial food and beverage um, type of uh, option there. So having additional seating along the streetscape would be very beneficial, both for a financial perspective for those businesses as well as the tenants that are living in the building. But um, moving on for access, we have 10 feet roughly from back of curb to the property line. So we, with our furnishing zone, we have roughly six feet of access on this um, sidewalk area. Next, moving to the reconstructed curb cut. This is an existing curb cut that we're reconstructing with a new driveway entrance. We have three feet for the driveway itself, 4.7 4. Um, 4. feet for the accessibility portion. We can modify this to five feet if deemed necessary by the commission. Moving on to blue bikes. Our team has extensively looked around our project site for a location for the blue bike station. Originally, we had it on Fenwood Ave, but actually Fenwood Road, but based on conversations with National Grid Gas, there's a gas line that needs to be maintained and protected, and they did not allow us to have this pump out. And we have records of that, that we have submitted to the commission. So based on the lack of space for the actual sidewalk itself, it's all a very narrow sidewalk ranging from five to seven feet. We are actually proposing to do this on the south side of another RTH property along Huntington. So to facilitate this, RTH would actually have to give up some of their land, which is delineated by this line right here. We produce an easement for the city. There's an existing curb, um, planter bed along with two immature trees that would have to be removed as well. But with the installation of this, we'll still have our five foot minimum access around this tree pit right here. And based on that, I, I would like to have some um, comments from the uh, mission themselves on this installation. And Peter, do you I want to just, mention something? Yes, I just wanted to interject to say that the two immature trees are on RTH's land. So they're not they're not trees that are that, that are on city property. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Jonathan. Does that conclude your presentation? So I will run to the canopy plan as well. 
This is uh, we're petitioning for a canopy plan as delineated here. It would be 21.8 feet wide and 1.6 feet um, in length. And this canopy is shown in this section view here as well. Jonathan, did you uh, engage the PIC staff as to the easement that uh, you, uh, how can I say properly, so that PDA is willing to give to the city because I don't see the easement language. So we have not created the easement yet because we would want feedback from PIC and staff to the creation of this new bike okay. station. Got it, Jonathan. So, we are okay, happy to create that easement. I'm with you, so let's, let's open the floor for fellow commission members. So at this point, comments or questions or concerns by fellow commission members to Jonathan and or Peter? No, I think he's good. Go ahead. Oh, okay, no, Amy, okay, they, they're asking about the bike stuff. I had another comment, so thanks. No, these guys are coordinating uh, with William right now. That's ongoing. I think that Sarah's a part of that. So, uh, right, like it's just that you to finalize whatever you're doing with William, but but with Sarah, so that um, that that's happening together. Uh, Dennis, give me a second. Amy, the the way the bicycles are positioned, and I'm trying to get a sense of what is the net sidewalk set yeah. net width. What, what, because hopefully while I'm walking, and this is a Sarah Leon issue, whether there's enough room left so that I don't smack myself into the back of a sidewalk with a bike wheel. Yeah, and we don't really want the sidewalk to meander, right, like so that you're going around the tree and right like into the, okay. the middle of the blue bike station. Yeah, so right, like I, I think that um, we have some outstanding comments, but I, I just want to be clear that I think our comments and Sarah's comments should be tackled together. So what does that all translate to in terms of giving guidance to uh, Jonathan? Uh, to coordinate with Sarah and William um, in this two weeks. Okay, uh, so uh, Todd, uh, some guidance on when you need to know whether we are going to have the easement uh, aspect of this petition. When do you need to know that? Bye. Yeah, um, so we would have to advertise that in the papers and we would need to know that by the end of the day. Um, however, there are some nuances here. I am admittedly ignorant as to how we typically place blue bike stations on private property. Those typically have not included any sort of PIC approved easement. Um, so I think uh, potentially that's how we would handle this situation. Um, but, but again, I, I think if there was going to be some sort of, you know, easement granted to the public through the PIC, we would know that uh, today in order to be able to include that in the newspapers. Do you think whether you can sort all of it down today? That is so that you can advertise it. Now, Todd, since it is three yeah. weeks, uh, can we wait or is next week a bad week because none of us are going to be here or something like that? Yeah. Um, Potentially, we'd be, we, uh, that's a decent point, actually. Potentially, we would be able to delay the advertisements for a week longer than we normally would. Um, I, I'll have to check with um, maybe Kim uh, with BTD and, and the Blue Bikes coordinator to find out exactly how she usually handles these types of things. Um, I'll, I'll investigate that offline as soon as this, the hearing's over. Awesome. Okay, so a little bit of homework to be done. I am hopeful that all the petitions as presented, plus any supplemental petitions appropriately signed uh, can be advertised for June 15th. Todd, that's the working hypothesis I am running with on behalf of the fellow commission members. Is that, that, that does it sound fairly accurate to you? Yeah, uh, worst case scenario, I think what we would have to do is um, if we can't get it figured out today. Uh, I know. We, okay. yeah. We'll, we'll, okay. we'll figure something out. Got it. Uh, any further comments or questions by fellow commission members? Sorry, Dennis, I think I interrupted you. You had something you wanted to share? Oh, yeah, no, no, no worries, Barra. I just had to go back to the to the first sheet if everybody's all set with the uh, bike comment. Thank, thank you. 
Um, so thank you uh, for addressing our comments a couple weeks ago with the tree. So um, the only thing is a couple weeks ago after you submitted the comments, we did make a change. Uh, so instead of um, having trees over our facilities, we actually want them four feet from our facilities. So I don't know if you could just uh, review uh, the other, the, for the new trees. Um, so if you could just review that um, before the next public hearing, that would, that would be great. You know, we do accept uh, ground cover or low bushes over our facilities. If, if yeah, you need to do that as well, that's no problem. Thank you, Denise. Thank, Thank you. you. Hey, Jonathan, uh, truly yes. excited about seeing, and sorry, Peter, you too, sir. Uh, great to see those uh, chairs and benches. Uh, are those chairs movable chairs or are they bolted into the ground chairs? Meaning uh, at night, are they going to walk or does someone have to take control over them so it doesn't, it's not used as something that gets carried and walked away or whack me over my head? Can you? I would say that, that um, it, will, it will be, to the extent that we can remain, um, that we could attach them together, for instance, with cables uh, in the night or otherwise, uh, you know, make them difficult to move or nearly impossible, that would be, in our view, somewhat preferable to, to having to bolt them down to the sidewalk. Um, but we understand that, that the city has, has views on this and we would conform uh, to the city's views. Yeah, thank you, Peter. It's just that this area gets a lot of uh, school-type pedestrian traffic, and sometimes they are high-energy school students. Okay, if you sort of understand what I said. And in any case, Todd, we are covered by a maintenance agreement on the chairs and the tables and all of that good stuff. So actually, um, my direction of the project team has actually been to remove those tables and chairs from these PIC plans, um, so that the PIC is not considering them, and then the project can separately apply for uh, some form of outdoor dining setup through the city's kind of revamped outdoor dining program. So this, th those, those uh, tables and chairs won't uh, appear on the plan when they come back for the public hearing. Uh, that sounds quite sensible and a better course of action. Peter, if you're okay with that, if you could That's instruct uh, the good people at Niche Engineering to amend the plans so that at the public hearing, we are looking at the right set of plans and approving the right things. Does that work for you, Peter? Absolutely. Awesome, thank you. So uh, any further comments by fellow commission members? I think we are good on that front. Any comments by PIC staff or members of today's audience? All set, beyond everything we've talked about already. Seeing or hearing none, we will mark you up for three weeks on June 15th with hopefully the right subset of petitions. Can I ask a quick question about the uh, comment about the trees and the four foot um, requirement for the, um, for your facilities? Oh, sure, it has to uh, pretty much do with like tree roots. You just don't want the tree roots to go into the system. Cause that's, ha that's happened in the past. That's, that's really why we made that comment. I mean, if you want, we can discuss it after the after the meeting. Is is the meaning of that, Denise? Is that is it a a a, 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 ver a horizontal separation that you need of four feet? I would say pro you know, probably like a um, you know yeah the horizontal separation. How deep could we be for that not to be a concern? Like and then I can I can look into that and get back to you. Okay, that would be helpful to know. In other words, if if there's a vertical distance of say at least six feet, would it, would we be okay being? In the vicinity. Yeah, I can I can check. I'll just have to look at the depth of the, uh, the you know the, the pipe there, the, the sewer pipe. Denise, so, uh, no, in the in the past we've um, you know I think I think other people have looked into um, like a roof barrier, um, and I know some I know uh, here back at Water and Sewer sometimes we think it works, sometimes we don't. So I think it you know maybe if you um, you know, want to show that uh, something will work. I mean, it maybe it's something we could accept. If that's you know, if that's like an option Thank that you, you want to look into. Yeah, I don't know, if, Jonathan. We probably don't want to do that on the fly with regard to the depth. No, we'll take we'll this discuss. guidance. Yeah, we'll take this guidance and work with it. Thank you. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Dennis. Thank you, everyone. So we will see you in three weeks. Hopefully, all things squared away. Thank you. Last item on today's new business agenda, one post office square, Pearl Street, Milk Street, Oliver Street, Kilby Street, 
postal proper pedestrian easement and specific repairs on a set of petitions by one post office square LLC. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Nate Scheel. I'm a civil engineer with Tetratech. Uh, here with me today is John Wild. He represents one post office square ownership. Uh, also, David Linhart, project attorney, and uh, Courtney Sudak uh, with my office, uh, transportation engineer. I would like to share my screen. Uh, we have two petitions in front of the commission today. Uh, first, we have a specific repair plan for Milk, Pearl, and Oliver Street. Um, just to orientate the commission, uh, one post office square is an existing 41-story uh, tower. Um, front door is along Pearl Street, along the bottom of the plan. Milk Street uh, to the east, excuse me, to the west, and to the north is Oliver Street. Uh, specific repairs uh, proposed for Pearl Street include uh, closing off an existing curb cut in this location, um, removing a granite paver uh, surface and providing a concrete sidewalk, let me zoom in a bit to help, uh, providing a new concrete sidewalk uh, with a, uh, it's called a grace top surface uh, retarder. Um, what that product does is it inhibits the, con the upper quarter inch or so of the concrete from curing. Uh, it can be power washed off and then it exposes the aggregate. It doesn't necessarily change the color of the concrete, but allows the color of the aggregate to, to come through. Um, we thought this would be a nice finish to the front of the building to complement some, you know, the building, the resurface, or the refacing of the building and some existing uh, or proposed pavers out of the public realm uh, adjacent to the building. Um, along Pearl Street, there is a number of uh, street furniture items, including parking meters, uh, fire alarm, uh, fire hydrants. There's four existing street trees, which are kind of washed out by the hatch, but there's a street tree here, another tree here, tree here, and a tree down here. All these trees have been maintained uh, during construction and will stay in place. Um, also, um, we've been asked to provide uh, numerous uh, We've been asked to provide 64 uh, public park, uh, bicycle parking uh, racks around the project. Uh, we've proposed three along Pearl Street here. We've got five on the opposite side of Pearl Street, uh, another six on uh, this corner of Milk Street, another five over here on Milk, um, and they kind of go around the project as well. Uh, also on uh, Pearl Street, we've accommodated a seasonal relocation of blue bikes. Uh, during the warmer months, the blue bikes occupy some space on the street, uh, but during the winter months, we provided a location up on the sidewalk uh, where those blue bikes could remain. Um, another action that's in front of you is a surface pedestrian easement. Um, due to all the street furnishings uh, in the, the public uh, portion of the sidewalk, there's not an accessible path uh, for pedestrians to get through. So we proposed a variable width uh, easement to allow pedestrians behind all the street furnishings, behind the blue bike, and to provide a minimum uh, five foot clear path. Um, at the intersection with Milk and Oliver, on our side, uh, we've been uh, asked to uh, provide a, a bump out and split the accessible ramps. Uh, we've been working with William Moose and Sarah Leong uh, for the past five or six months to uh, come up with a design that we all feel is safe and something that can be implemented. So on our side, we're able to split the handicap ramps on the corner of Milk and Pearl. Uh, we're also able to split them on the, uh, on the south side as well and construct new ramps on Milk here and over here as well. Um, one thing I would note at this corner of Milk there's not a, uh, a curb ramp today. Um, so this, this new configuration will improve uh, accessibility. Um, street lighting exists along Pearl Street. We're gonna maintain existing street light locations. Uh, we're providing new uh, poles and fixtures and replacing existing steel 
uh, full box coverage. Along uh, Milk Street, we are uh, replacing the existing sidewalk with a new, uh, new concrete sidewalk in this lighter gray hatch is just plain standard uh, concrete. There's no uh, surface retarder within the concrete. All joints, uh, for all streets, all the joints will be saw cut. Um, we are providing uh, five new light poles and conduit along Milk Street. And at the Milk and Oliver Street intersection, we're providing another bump out uh, to improve uh, pedestrian and, and handicap access. Uh, along Oliver Street, again, we're providing, we're maintaining two existing light uh, locations. We're providing new poles and fixtures, new pull boxes, and then at the east end of the project, we're providing two new lights along Oliver. We are proposing uh, one new curb cut. It's for access into a uh, self-park uh, garage. Uh, this will be uh, in only. It's 18 feet wide. Um, the sidewalk will continue at grade. There will be no dip down for uh, pedestrians. And then to exit the garage, we're maintaining an existing curb cut. Um, that curb cut will be exit only from the garage and it also serves the loading for the building. Uh, again, at the Milk and Oliver Street intersections, we're reconstructing uh, ramps on all four sides. Uh, at this Kilby Milk intersection, there's an existing island that's out there today. Um, the island does not have a formal sidewalk at this point, uh, so we're proposing a new ramp and a uh, concrete sidewalk, which will lead up to uh, the opposite side of Kilby where again we're reconstructing uh, the ramp and uh, uh, providing for better access. Um, I will note we've been working with uh, William and Sarah uh, quite diligently over the past few months. We had a, a meeting last Friday after the plan was submitted. Um, there are a few revisions that we owe William and Sarah. Uh, specifically we're going to remove some striping at this intersection and we're gonna restripe, uh, come up with a different striping plan for this uh, piece of Kilby uh, and milk. Um, I do have Courtney with me who can speak more to the uh, uh, intersections and the improvements that are necessary if you'd like, or I'm happy to jump into questions. Thank you, Nate. And thank you, John, for supporting uh, work of this nature. Uh, so at this point, uh, let me open this thing up for fellow commission members for any questions for me. I want to thank the team um, for working with William and me over the past couple of months, um, especially in regards um, to the configuration of the ramps and some of the crossings. Um, I fear that our conversation about the ramps and ramp configurations um, was so, um, so in depth that um, we we maybe lost a little tra track of the exposed aggregate um, on in the pedestrian right of way um, in our comments originally from 2018, um, advocating for a standard concrete um, for the path of travel. Um, so I do want to bring that up again, um, and I'm happy to work with you in the next um, three weeks to kind of sort that out. Um, but as a standard, um, the Mayor's Commission for Persons with Disabilities um, typically um, will only support a standard concrete color for the path of travel and then anything um, outside that um, um, can be a specialty color concrete, but we would want to maintain that path of travel so it has visual connectivity um, to its surroundings. Okay, I'd be happy to to touch base with you offline on that. Great, thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Nate. Any further questions or comments to Nate and his team? Hearing none, any comments by PSC staff or members of today's audience? Uh, just one relatively minor comment. I apologize, Nate, I just noticed this, but um, on your detail sheet, um, your, one of your concrete uh, details has uh, um, reinforcing um, dowel in it. Uh, we don't allow any reinforcing steel or wire mesh or anything like that. Um, so if you can just update that detail. Um, 
just say yeah. Absolutely. Todd, give me a second. Well, uh, there was a time in my time in our past where we would ask that thing for very commercial type sidewalks where, uh, okay, uh, because it, it gets torn up. Uh, so it's not a complete thing. Uh, uh, I just keep it out there. I would put the wire measures just to keep the concrete from getting slaughtered if it was a high use ramp that comes from a parking garage. Sure, sure. I'll, I'll work with Nate to make sure that all of these awesome. details are awesome. standard. Good stuff. Thank you. Uh, any further comments by PSC staff or members of today's audience? Hearing none, we will mark you up for three weeks on June 15th. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Then, Appreciate it. That concludes the new business segment of our agenda. We have an administrative matter. Uh, upon the nomination by PIC representatives of the Public Works Department, appoint Transportation Department Commissioner Nicholas Go and or his designee Amy Cording as the Vice Chair of the Public Improvement C Commission. Todd, we have to take a vote on this thing? Or? Yeah, just very, this is simple. Um, if uh, either Chairman Franklin Hodge um, or Para, his designee for Public Works, is unavailable, if both are unavailable, this would just allow Nick Gov or Amy Cording to chair the hearings as Amy has been doing for years. Um, yes, we do have to just take a formal vote of this, of this uh, item. So, like a motion to this effect, as I have stated, it's a simple yay, right? I mean, there's no. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't think Amy can make the motion. Um, no, I know. I but <laughs> that would be awkward. Yeah. Uh, Sarah, could you be ever so kind to propose this motion for me, please? I make a motion um, upon nomination by the PIC representative of the Public Works Department or of the Mayor's Commission for Persons with Disabilities to appoint the Transportation Department Commissioner Nick Go or his designee Amy Cording as the Vice Chair of the Public Improvement Commission. Do I give a second? Okay. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed to abstain? Hearing none, motion passes. Amy, you are still in it. Okay, uh, thank you so much, everyone. Uh, that like a, like to hear a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Thank Good you. To see you. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Bye.